Welcome everybody to today's video. I'm going to talk about the coins that you're going to need to know for this upcoming uh, bull market that we're having in the current bear market that we are in. And yes, we are in a bear market. Suffice to say that many people still believe that we are in a bull market. Now, a couple of reasons that comes up. This reminds me a lot of the 2019 market in which we were going in um, trading sideways for about two years before our run up in 2020. Now, if you take a look at the chart real quick, you can see very, very clearly that this mimics a lot of our peak back in June of 2019. In fact, that year, Bitcoin traded sideways for roughly for about a year. And we peaked here around March of 2021. Now, I know people are going to say, well, is that going to history going to repeat itself? Or are we going to end up in an up market like what we did? I mean, that's still within the realm of possibility. But the assumption here is that we're coming off of a consolidation uh, window that could potentially lead to uh, lower prices uh, or sideways action for the next several months. So here is where I want to be talking about the coins that are going to be really making it out in the next couple of years here. So back in 2019 and back in 17, if you remember from my channel and from all my videos, we were talking about this idea that the market goes through these hype cycles, right? These hype cycles generally are going to be moving in tandem. You can actually see them a little better here. Um, the last hype cycle that we had was in 17, and the one recently that we had here was in 2020. In fact, um, after our hype cycles, we had a period of long, a long period of consolidation for at least a week, at least a year. And so the idea here is that although it doesn't look exactly like the 17, 18 market, it's turning out to be a lot. If you take a look at the logarithmic curve, a lot like the seven, the 19 and the 20 market, which means that even though we didn't have that massive parabolic run like we did uh, back in 16 and 17, what we're having here is uh, what I call the uh, staircase. This is a staircase type of movement, which is very common in asset classes like this. All right, so let's go back to our um, charts here and let's take a look at our crypto market. So if you take a look at the top 10, top 15 tokens, majority of these um, that went up this year where a lot of these layer one Ethereum kind of killers like your scales, right? For example, your Solanas, your Cardanos, uh, even to some extent, uh, and also a lot of stable coins like Luna, Avalanche. Avalanche is not stable, but layer ones like Polkadot. And the one that really surprised me a lot was Binance. Now, the reason I say that is because if you go back to 2019, which was the peak of the last cycle. So if you take a look at um, after the 17 cycle, down to 18, July 2019 was the peak when Bitcoin, believe it or not, was at $10,000. If you take a look at your top 10, we had Tron, EOS, uh, XRP, uh, we had uh, Bitcoin Cash, and Binance. Now, out of these, let's say, actually, let's go, let's go down the list here. Out of these 15 that we have, I would say Bitcoin right here uh, obviously stayed. Ethereum stayed. In fact, Ethereum was at 227 in 2019, which is kind of incredible. Uh, and you had Bitcoin at 10,000. These two are considered to be like your coins that are probably going to make it to the next cycle. I mean, it's, that's just part of it. Now, XRP fell out of favor because of the whole regulation. XRP was attempting to become another Bitcoin. Litecoin fell out of favor, never really recovered back to the top 10. Bitcoin Cash um, never really recovered. Uh, Binance did. Uh, EOS never did, Tron never did, Stella never did, Monero never did, and Dash never did. Now, the commonality between these is that these were all Bitcoin copycats. So Monero, Dash, uh, Bitcoin copycats, um, and XRP, which was kind of like a Bitcoin copycat in a way. You know, it's not really based off the blockchain, but basically they try to do what Bitcoin did. Litecoin was definitely a Bitcoin copycat. So a lot of these did not make it. Now, uh, I'm not saying that these are bad coins or anything. I'm just saying that the market rewarded infrastructure plays for the next cycle. Because if you take a look at uh, EOS and Stellar, these are all coins. They had no real like intrinsic value aside from the fact that they did things faster and better than Bitcoin. But the problem was 
that these coins did not have much utility to begin with because they were technically doing the exact same thing that Bitcoin did, but they just kind of added like a little bell, a little shiny, shiny bells and whistles to them. For example, Monero did privacy. Dash was um, what they called the dark nodes, which you could actually stake. Uh, Bitcoin SV was a copycat. Bitcoin Cash was a copycat and so on. So out of all of these, the only one that you would say was a truly like Ethereum killer was EOS. Now, I'm not going to go down to the bottom list because if you take a look at the bottom list, there was a lot of junk in here. IOTA, obviously, you're, uh, you know, at some cases, um, uh, Tezos kind of reinvented themselves. But there's a lot of uh, Bitcoin copycats in the 19th cycle. Now, if you go back and let me just kind of go back to the historical range just to show you guys and you guys can do this. The 17 market, I'm going to use uh, 2017 as the last cycle prior, which was the parabolic run. You could see Bitcoin was at a thousand bucks, right? And so Bitcoin was a thousand bucks at that time. So even if you bought the top end of the cycle in 2007, you would have made like a gangbuster here because Bitcoin's obviously at 40,000. Now, the thing is that Ethereum was at eight bucks in 2017, right? And so it, let, let's just go, let's just go to 2018 because I think that was the end of the market. So let's go back to the tail end, January of 18, okay? Mm -hmm. In January of 18, Ethereum was at about a thousand bucks. Okay, so so Bitcoin was a little bit 16, so a little bit more. Um, this one was a little bit more realistic because that kind of marked that that top in the 17 market. So even if you bought Bitcoin in 18, you've been okay. But if you take a look at the top 15 coins, right in 18, the ones that actually ended up in the 19 market, obviously were Bitcoin Cash, and that was actually the bear market. So technically, it really didn't work, but. Cardano stayed. NEM ended up not doing well. Litecoin was still in the top 10. But you got to remember that the, the 17, I think the 17 and 18 market were basically the top end of that. And these did not make it uh, to the next cycle, which is what the 2020 cycle. So if you take a look at Dash, IOTA, Stellar, Tron, these still hanged around right in, in 19. But the difference was in 2020, that's where they started to actually drop off and what had happened was the market has shifted the market has shifted against a lot of these bitcoin copycats specifically stuff like bitcoin cash you notice bitcoin sv was no longer here anymore uh well bitcoin sv came in 19 but and if you take a look at um the 17 market some of these transferred over so 19 we had that rebound um obviously uh, ethereum and bitcoin did very well Cardano kind of held on, Litecoin, Stellar, like the usual stuff like EOS Monero. But if you take a look at the 2020 market, and let me go back to uh, current what we're at right now. If you take a look at the top 10, top 15, something interesting happened, right? So what had happened was in this current market that we're in, Bitcoin, Ethereum still stayed. And in fact, Bitcoin, Ethereum are still a lot higher than where they were at. But what you got was these stable coins, the B, uh, Tether specifically, USDC, right? You had Luna, uh, which is technically kind of like a like an algorithmic stable. But you also had all the L1s kick in. For example, Solana, uh, Polkadot, Avalanche, and even some of the meme coins like Doge. But if you take a look at majority of these, XRP still stayed in here. Cardano still stayed. So some of these coins are still going to continue to have really strong communities that are going to continue in the next cycle. Like, for example, Cardano and XRP are just really, really good community coins that people tend to like. But you don't see the Bitcoin caches anymore. You don't see the Bitcoin SV. You don't see the dashes. You don't see the Moneros. So the, the lesson here is the market rewarded a lot of these utility tokens this time around that had a lot of ecosystem growth to it specifically things like Avalanche and Solana, and also reward some of the old guard tokens like Cardano and XRP that have a very strong following. So the market kind of kind of bifurcated a little bit. But the only consistent coins that you can see here that continuously uh, grew in value and also to some extent had a lot of staying power were Bitcoin and ETH. I mean, these were the only two that I would say with confidence they had. And Binance actually did a really good run. Uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Binance. Now, the thing with Binance, which is very interesting to me, is that this is an infrastructure play. Binance was considered to be an exchange coin back in 2017 that literally was just like no different than any of the other crappy exchanges that came out. But the market had, um, the Binance had reinvented itself multiple times. And because of that, the token actually went up to $67 billion. So this is a, a great example of a utility token 
that garnered a lot of value over time. And I suspect Binance is just going to continue to expand and grow in the next several years. So this coin is probably going to continue in the next cycle. This was the biggest surprise to me out of all of them. Now, your second one that kind of came up was Tether and USDC, which are interesting because after 2000, during 2019, we had the growth of a lot of these stable coins. So stable coin market really expanded um, during that bear market. And so that took out two spots for that. And Solana are the newer ones, Luna, Polkadot, and Avalanche are your newer tokens, which I think a lot of people kind of tend to uh, missed out on because they were too focused on the narrative that Ethereum killers were not going to do well. And so I think for the next cycle, you should be able to see these kind of translate over, but maybe not to the same extent as some of these other um, other chains that came up. Now, you also saw a lot of meme coins like Dogecoin, Shiba, and some of the layer two. So a lot of this was kind of built on ETH. I think if 2020 was any, any indication, this really came from the backs of making Ethereum more scalable versus the last cycle which was more about making Bitcoin more scalable. And I think people kind of gave up on Bitcoin as far as knocking it out. So Bitcoin's here to stay. I mean, that's pretty much going to be a given. Dashes couldn't take it out. Monero couldn't take it out. Uh, not even Bitcoin SV, not even the forks, all of that kind of kind of solidified Bitcoin now as the first market mover, uh, having the primary advantage. Ethereum now is under attack from all of these other coins. But the thing is with Ethereum is... Even if Ethereum does get um, some competition from some like the Solanas and the polka dots and the avalanches, which are still occupying the 15, I think Ethereum is still going to be considered a lot higher than what it was. Now, one thing I also want to mention is that Ethereum has transitioned itself quite a bit. I mean, the Ethereum now than in prior cycles is a very different Ethereum. This Ethereum now is ha has the ability to be collateralized. It also has uh, undergone various technological changes that other coins have not. So the pace of innovation uh, from Bitcoin and Ethereum, well, not Bitcoin specifically, but Ethereum, reminds me a lot of when Bitcoin um, was changing quite a bit uh, back in 17 when they underwent some of the upgrades, the forks and things like that, that came out of it. And I suspect, and again, I suspect that these coins right here, some of them may not survive. And the reason is because some of these coins right here are running on a lot of incentives, specifically uh, tokens like Avalanche, which are running very hot on incentives. I don't know how long that's going to continue, but right now Avalanche is still very, very uh, popular and still getting a lot of traction. Solana has a very great, um, has a very good sense of where it's supposed to fit in this ecosystem. Uh, however, again, it's really tough to compete against ETH's uh, ecosystem and development. Now, take a look at the top 15, and if you kind of go down a little bit, a lot of it's stable coins, like we had DAI, uh, UST kind of occupying a lot of that 20. Litecoin still, you know, it's still considered to be there, but it's becoming less relevant than ever. And so when you're talking about these coins, guys, you really want to look at which coins are going to move forward. At the moment, I think that the market is really saturated at the point at, at right now at the point. Um, there are no game tokens, no NFT tokens, no game tokens in the top 15. I think that's going to change because the next iteration of the market is going to be the NFTs in the gaming space. Just like what we had with the switch of the old guard from the last cycle, which was Bitcoin copycats. Now we had Ethereum killers. And I think the next uh, trend is going to be after the Ethereum copycats, we had a lot of uh, stables. And I think what's going to happen is we're going to end up getting a lot of, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come back to people. And it's going to really shock them that we're going to start seeing a lot of these gaming tokens like Sandbox, Axie Infinity, perhaps moving up the, the chain a little faster than usual. And the, and the simple reason is because the market is now a lot more mature than what it was in the past. Uh, Gala Games is another example. You know, we have a lot, a lot of coins that have a lot of potential in the gaming space and the NFT and Metaverse that are probably going to surprise people in the top 15. Now, if you take a look at all of the coins that are up right now, we do have a lot of DeFi projects that are up that kind of fell off the map. And I think that's still going to be part of that um, narrative. But that was a sub a sub micro narrative that came in uh, back in 2020. And these coins like the Aves and the Uniswaps really did not really hold their ground too much. But we do see uh, quite a bit of some of these 
newer coins that are coming out like the Aves kind of fell apart here which is kind of unfortunate but that's just the way the market goes it goes through these main cycles but if you take a look at some of the uh, bottom end coins you know we do have quite a bit of coins that are kind of nipping at the heels here that could potentially be um, a very top, a high top 15 so in my opinion again I'm just kind of summarizing the points here is that you know in the last cycles we did have a change of the guard right and now what we're starting to see is I think even though we still have some of the old guard here like the Cardano's and the XRP's that's becoming a lot less and we're starting to see like the old guard which is Bitcoin Ethereum still holding top two but everything else kind of cycling in and again it, it, it it's really important to understand that if you're not dealing with an infrastructure play it's probably going to be very difficult for you to maintain a top five or top ten all right hopefully this this did you enjoy the video CBM